When it comes to convertible PCs, there are increasingly a lot of 13 and even 14 inch options on the market, but the 15 inch ones are, well, few and far between. Luckily, HP is here with the Spectre X360 15 inch for 2019. Today, we're gonna to take a look at both the new 4K OLED option as well as the existing GTX 1050 Ti. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started, let's talk about 15 inch convertibles. Of course, there's Surface Book 2, which is definitely one of the more expensive options out there, but still, if you can afford it, it's really nice, but it's not technically convertible in the sense of hinges like X360 here, as well as Dell, who is the other company that has one on the market. That's the XPS 15 two-in-one, which surprisingly hasn't been refreshed yet for 2019. So instead, we sell the one from last year using AMD graphics. Meanwhile, HP, well, they keep reinventing themselves as they like to say, and they have a brand new version on the market here. Now, there are two options, and it's gonna be a tough choice between these because the first one we're gonna take a look at is the 4K OLED one, which sells itself, correct? After all, everybody's using Samsung OLED panels this year. Why should HP be any different? However, that said, there are compromises here. For instance, this version only has a quad-core processor and GeForce MX 154 graphics, which is okay but it pales compared to the other version that's on the market, which is a six core option at 45 watts for the processor, as well as the GTX 1050 Ti, which is significantly more powerful. But as they like to say, you can't have it all. Let's take a look though at that 4K OLED option to see what's new. All right, looking at the exterior of the X360 15, and let's just say it's ornate. Uh, HP has been doing a lot when it comes to design lately. And for some reason on the 15 inch, I think it's almost over engineered. It looks a little too crazy. But if you saw our video for the X360 13 inch, well, this borrows heavily from that design. In fact, it basically mirrors that device, including that new gem cut design, which does look really nice. It just looks super fancy. It also has that Type-C option on the corner, which is really cool because it allows you to use your hand with a mouse without having cable interference. When it comes to the exterior of the device, you have two color options, including Poseidon Blue and Dark Ash, so you can choose either one of those. They're both pretty close to each other, but they both look nice here, and you can see both of them contrasted here to see the difference. And when it comes to ports, there aren't a ton on this device, but it seems to have the critical ones there that a lot of us enjoy. For instance, it has USB Type-A, as well as Type-C with Thunderbolt 3. You also get a full HDMI port and a micro SD card slot. And I know I can hear you guys already saying it would have been better with a full SD card slot, and you're probably not wrong on that, but everybody wants to save a little space here. You also get those double vents on the side and that new camera switch, which actually disables the web camera. Now there's an ongoing battle between which is the best solution here. This actually kills the camera at the BIOS level, which is actually kind of cool. Disables the driver. It won't even show up in Windows anymore. Still, a lot of people like what Lenovo is doing, which has a little slide that just goes over the camera. It's a little more brute force, not as elegant looking, but you also know that camera is not on, which I think a lot of people enjoy. Now, one downside of a convertible laptop is, well, weight. So although this isn't really a heavy laptop, for instance, the heaviest version weighs 4.6 pounds or 2.1 kilograms, while the 4K OLED version weighs just 4.4 pounds or two kilograms, it's still a little heavy on that display. So if you're gonna hold it in your lap, that display can rock back and fall down. That's just a trade-off here having a hinge design. Now, let's take a closer look at that display. Now, no surprises here, HP is leveraging Samsung's 4K OLED panels. Everybody else is doing apparently this year. It's a very good panel. So this gets over 500 nits of brightness. In fact, I actually measured at 571 nits, so it can get very bright. It also supports a full color gamut in Windows 10 HDR mode, which I have actually never seen in a laptop before. So that might be something with the Samsung OLED display, but I've seen HDR displays before, like Lenovo's version S940, and that did not support the full color gamut. So this is actually a very powerful display. Color accuracy is also very good with 100% sRGB and 95% Adobe RGB. So this is a very good display. Now, unfortunately, as you're gonna probably notice, I can already hear you in comments saying is, what about those bezels? So HP is doing a really good job on side bezels, if you can give them credit for that. They are thinner than last year's model, and that's really nice. And they do get away with calling it a micro bezel, but you all see that top and bottom one, which are rather large. Now to HP's defense here, the reason they do that is because they put the antenna lines on the top part. So this laptop gets very good reception for Wi-Fi, but you do get that rather large top bezel and you also get a chin at the bottom. Personally, my preference here would have been to have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio or something taller to fill in that space. 
I think Intel's wireless systems are good enough these days where you don't need the antennas on top, but I get HP's rationale here. Still, I don't think it's a very sexy looking design, especially when compared to what Dell is doing or even what Razer is doing these days. So there is a trade-off. Now this is a full 4K OLED panel and it does support touch and inking as well. In fact, HP throws the pen in the box. Now this is an Intrig pen, so you can use a Surface pen if you want with it. You also include in the box a nice little leather carrying case, which is pretty nice. A lot of companies don't do that these days, so you can protect it. And that carrying case actually has a little loop for the pen. So while the pen doesn't stick to the device itself, you do carry it around with you with that leather case. And hey, it's something nice that they throw in the box. Then when it comes to the top deck of this device, you do get quad speakers, which is really good. And it has a dedicated amplifier. So this is actually very good for audio. In fact, for visual and audio, as you can imagine, this is an exceptionally good laptop. The keyboard's also nice. This is the same keyboard that they're using in the X360 13. Travel is very good. I love the feel of it. It's a very crisp feeling design on it. And then it comes to that trackpad. You know what I'm going to say. It is still not using precision touchpad drivers. Although HP kind of did tell me recently that they are looking to use precision touchpads on the next gen generation. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that does happen. But still, you're going to get stuck here with Synaptics. And for the most part, it's pretty good. It depends what you're using. If you're going to use a lot of UWP apps from the Microsoft Store, you may have some scrolling issues there. Other than that, though, it's a nice feeling trackpad. Still, when you look at the design of it, I think they could have made it a little bit larger. The trackpad feels large enough, in my opinion. But at the same time, I think they could have done a little bit more. I should also point out, this is one of the rare 15-inch convertibles. It also has a full number pad. Now, personally, I never use number pads and I don't like having an off-center keyboard, but I know a lot of you really enjoy having it. So if you're looking for a full convertible with number pad, well, this is probably gonna be one of your few choices to have on the market. Let's talk about power and performance options here. So as I mentioned earlier, this comes with the Core i7-8565U. That's a quad-core 15-watt processor, basically what they use in Ultrabooks. It's a pretty good performer as well. And they have an MX150 in there for a graphics boost. And I have to give them a little bit of credit here. That MX150 is the best-performing MX150 we've tested across all our laptops so far. So it does give you an extra boost. The thermals are actually pretty good on this laptop, too. I didn't really have any issues. Now, you will hear the fans come on if you're doing a Windows update or doing something really intensive, but overall it's a pretty cool system and I don't have too many complaints about it. RAM is 16 gigabytes and I do recommend you get that. And for storage, well, you can get all sorts of options. Now it's going to be PCIe, NVMe, it's going to perform very well, but they are offering an Optane option as well this time. So that's Intel Optane. If you don't know, think of it as like extra cash for the SSD. It sits in between RAM and the storage device and allows faster transfer. So this is going to be really good for video editing options and people who do a lot of file transfers and movements. It does give you a little performance boost, not in raw SSD speeds, but in just overall system performance. It's a nice option to have. It only costs like an extra 40 bucks. Now with this configuration here, you're talking about around $1,700. It's around $1,689. That's actually very good here considering you're getting a 4K touch OLED display that supports pen and inking in the box. If you look at something like a Dell XPS 15, it's gonna be more expensive because the GPU and CPU are more expensive as well. And Razer, of course, well, we all know about Razer, gonna be very expensive there. So pricing is actually very good on this. Now, the performance, well, it does stutter a little bit. So as I mentioned, you can throw on 4K HDR in here and it looks brilliant when you watch Netflix or any kind of movies and audio is very good too. But I did notice some stuttering. That's probably not too surprising. An Ultrabook processor pushing 4K, well, it's always gonna have a little bit of a trade-off, even with that MX150. Now the reason why HP is only offering this configuration with 4K OLED is because of battery life. 4K OLED does use a lot more battery. As I mentioned, this hits 571 nits of brightness. That's actually really bright for a display, so it's gonna drain. That said, using this configuration, it's actually not too bad. I'm getting around five to six hours of battery life. I think a lot of people looking for this laptop will probably use it plugged in when doing, say, video editing. Now let's contrast this with the other HP Spectre X360 we have here. That is running a six core processor, the 8750H, that's 45 watt. So that's basically the Dell XPS 15's processor. You're also gonna get a GTX 1050 Ti. Again, you can get that in the Dell XPS 15, although the new versions come out with an upgraded GPU, so keep that in mind. It's a very very good performer as well. Now that one, you only get a 4K LCD screen. It's a very good screen too. You're talking 100% sRGB, around 98, 99%, and around 78% for Adobe. So it's a good display. It hits around 300 nits of brightness, so not nearly as bright as HDR and 4K, but that's gonna be the trade-off. Still, it's a good option if you want that raw power, because this thing is gonna absolutely outperform this one. You don't get that stuttering anymore, and this is probably the better option if you're going to do video editing, something a little bit more heavy, that GTX 10. 
1650i is a heavy lifter. It can actually do quite a bit. And yeah, you can do gaming on this laptop. Again, the thermals stand up pretty well. I'm looking at around 10% decrease for thermal throttling, which is not too bad considering this isn't a gaming laptop, but you can do quite a bit with it. Now you're gonna get that for around the same price as this laptop. If I can get it a little bit cheaper, and that may be a good choice. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, you can't do both. And that's a weird choice you have to make. All right, let's bring it all in. So the Spectre X360 15 inch. Let me be honest here. So I review a lot of laptops on this channel because they're laptops I actually enjoy. That's, that's kind of the criteria how we do reviews here. I pick up a laptop and whether I like it or not, we review it. This laptop, I'm just gonna say it's not for me. It's not my favorite design out there. It's a little bit big. I think it's a little too ornate looking. I'm not a fan of those bezels. That said, I recognize a lot of people are looking for a convertible 15 inch. Don't forget, yeah, you can use this as a tablet, but you're probably not gonna hold it and use it as a tablet. But what you can do is flip this to presentation mode. And when you're laying in bed, watching a movie, flipping that keyboard around and bringing that display up close to you, it's pretty stellar. It's a really nice experience. And you're gonna get that with that 4K OLED panel. If you like watching Netflix, if you like watching Vudu, whatever you wanna do, well, this is gonna be a really good panel. I think for the price point, HP's offering is pretty good as well. That said, I don't completely love the design. I think they could do a little bit better, tone it down maybe a little bit, and let's thin out those bezels already. You know, I get it, HP, you wanna have good reception and that's fine, but everybody else, including Razer, has moved to thinner displays and now you're starting to look a little weird compared to everybody. Even Microsoft does thinner bezels at this point. All right, that said, if you're looking for a 15 inch convertible laptop on the market that also supports inking, well, you're not gonna get a lot of choice out there. At least you're going to get a 4K OLED option as well as a GTX 1050 Ti. You just have to choose between them. But at least the price here is pretty fair. Now I've given some criticism to HP for these laptops, but overall I think they're really nice designs. But you tell me in comments how you think they can improve them and what I left out in this review. Otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.